Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sewing Monday. I am really excited to get started, but before I do, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. I am, of course, T. You might know me from my sewing blog, Sewing by T, my fabric shop, Simply by T. Or maybe you're just here because you love sewing. Today is going to be awesome. One of the biggest difficulties that most seamstresses complain about has to do with fitting pants. And I admit I am one of those seamstresses too. Fitting pants is really, really hard. So today we are talking about pants. And to be honest, I could talk about fitting for an entire year and still not cover everything. So of course, today's 15 minute video is not going to cover everything, but I'm gonna cover as much as I can. So make sure that as you're hopping on, you like this video, say hello so that I know that you're there. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the shirt that I'm wearing before we get started. That way everybody is on before I start really talking about pants. So this is Neil here. Oh. This is the Itch to Stitch Bond shirt, okay? And if you're in my fabric group, you've already seen it. Um, I wore this for our family photos and I just haven't gotten a chance to wear it for our live videos. So I just wanna talk about why I really like this pattern. Um, and really it's the reason why I like most of the Itch to Stitch woven patterns is that it has built in cup sizes. So I didn't have to fiddle with the and do a full bust adjustment at all, which is of course amazing. Now these sleeves totally did not <laughs> come with the pattern. So as I was sewing, I decided I did not like the way the cuffed sleeves were turning out and I was really short on time. Um, I think we had like a day or two before we were supposed to do our photos and I was like, what am I going to do? So in a pinch, I cut them, I created a little channel and I added elastic. So if you're ever in a pinch and you need sleeves shortened and ready to go fast, that is a really quick way to do it, is to just create a little channel. Um, I actually wish I'd left them just a little bit longer. I thought that when I finished them, they would stay here, but I forgot to account for being able to move my arm, which of course is really important. So pants, pants, pants. What actually prompted this little live video is the Patterns for Pirates SOS Pants got a facelift. And let me tell you, it was quite the facelift. So the sizing chart got updated and included things like thigh and um, calf measurements, which is really, really important. But the most important thing um, with getting pants to fit is lining up the knee. So let me go ahead and read Mara's comment she, here. She says, hi T, I have a really hard time fitting pants as well. My current pants fitting project is the trousers from Simplicity 3668, a 40s retro reprint. So Mara, a lot of what I'm gonna cover here today is specific, specific to slim fitting pants, but I'm gonna talk about also um, looser trousers, um, and loose fitting pants because that's also important and how to use this information. So the most important thing that happened to the Patterns for Pirates SOS pants is this here. So let me do my best here to get this for you on screen. We have the placement of the knee and the placement of the calf. So previously when I was fitting pants and I'm 5'1 and I have a very short inseam. Most inseams are between 28 and 31 inches, mine is 26. So I would just, wherever the shortened length and line was, that's where I would shorten it. And let me tell you, I ended up with a lot of fit problems. I would either end up with a baggy knee or too tight calves or just overall weirdness going on. And the reason that was, was I wasn't lining up my knee to the pattern. So thankfully, Judy a few weeks ago talked about making your own leggings pattern. And I did try that out and it was a horrible failure because I don't know crap about crotch curves. And you know, what can I say? I haven't quite mastered that part yet. 
but it did give me some really, really great information. So today we are gonna use my special guest. Her name is Barbie, isn't she beautiful? So, and the reason why I'm using Barbie is I can point out the things that we need to know on the screen. Um, obviously Barbie does not have traditional proportions, but I was still able to knock out a really quick pants pattern for her just from the information from measuring. So when you're fitting pants, it really helps if you have a 100% sized leggings pattern to match from because you can then match up the parts and make sure they're gonna fit. So to make your leggings, you need your thigh measurement, which measures um, between the legs, so under the crotch and around the outest, furthest part of the leg, you need to know the circumference of the knee, the circumference of the ankle, um, the distance of the out seam, which is from the waist to the ankle. And then you need two very specific measurements. And this is gonna be the difference between baggy knees and not baggy knees. You need from crotch to knee and knee to ankle. And I use that information to just kind of knock out um, and just put together a really quick leggings pattern. Welcome, Melissa. It's okay that you're tardy. I have been Pinteresting a lot of craft stuff this week, specifically for my kids. So this little pattern is going to be your lifesaver because now you have your ankle marked out easily, your knee, and you know where your knee matches up, and then this line right here that goes right across from crotch point to crotch point. How can you use this? onto your pattern. So what I learned was that I am average size from crotch to knee and I am super short from knee to ankle. And so that meant that when I took out my pattern piece, you'll see, I actually took out, I think four inches right here. And that's where I shortened my pattern. So I left the knee mark exactly where it was and took everything up from there and blended all the sizes. So that made sure that I didn't end up with baggy knees because my knee was actually going to match up where it was supposed to be on the pattern. So that's the first thing you should be doing when you're looking at pants, especially slim fitting pants, is does the knee of the pattern match up to the knee of your body? Because that's gonna make a difference in all the other adjustments you have to look at. So I used the skinny leg options for the SOS pants. And what I did was I actually took my little pattern and I matched it up and I looked at the ankle part. Now the ankle part is supposed to be slim fitting. So if you end up with a bunch of ease in this part, you know that, okay, my ankle is thinner than this pattern and you can shrink that down. You're gonna match the same thing at the knee and you're gonna say, okay, this is supposed to be a slim fitting pattern. If the ease ends up being inches larger, well, you know that that knee is too large for your body and you can slim that down. And that way you're working progressively. Now there are two adjustments that I had to make that are specific to my body. Um, and so it's important to know what you're looking at. So I'm actually gonna use Barbie as an example again. Barbie has a traditional front leg mover on Barbie. And you'll notice it's kind of flat right? I mean, she's not a real person, but most people have a pretty flat quadricep. That's this muscle right here. I do not. So I knew I had to account for that on my pattern. I was able to match what they called my thigh measurement to the measurement chart, and that put me in one size. However, I know that my back leg is thin and my front leg is big. So I actually added to the front crotch curve only. I went to the next bigger size, but I left the back as the regular size. So that was my specific adjustment. So if you have normal legs like this, and they kind of just go up and down, you do not have to worry about this adjustment. But if you have what's called a sporty quad or a leg muscle here that is larger and actually comes away from your body, then you need more space in the front crotch curve to come along and around the front of your leg, okay? The next thing I had to do was I know that while my calf muscle 
or while my calf fit into a certain size, I have large back calves and a very straight front leg. So I added that little bit on the back pattern piece only and used the smaller size on the front. And this gave me a more perfected fit to my body. Now, not all designers are going to include the thigh and the calf marking. A good pattern though will have a notch for the knee so you'll know and that it'll either be notched or they'll have a line that says length and shorten here. Well, that's meant to be the knee mark. Your knee may not match that spot so you have to measure the lengths. If you don't, you are shorting yourself because now your pants aren't gonna match up. So let's say that you're not making slim fitting pants, okay? You're making a more loose fit like the SOS straight leg. How do we use this information now? So obviously, we don't have to worry about our pants being too loose at the knee and the calf at the ankle, but they could end up too tight. And this has actually happened to me in the past because of my large calf, the rest of the leg looked straight and then it got hung up on the back of my leg. So use your little 100%, this is what you look like piece, match it up, and figure out, do you have enough width in there to fit past your body? That way you're able to make those really fast adjustments that are gonna get you a better fit. Now, there is one more adjustment that I did on my pants, and not everybody needs this one, but I think it's important that you see it. So, where's my pattern piece? I have not a sway back, because a sway back implies that I need less length. In the back of my pants and I don't what I have is a large butt projection and then a very sharp curve and I don't know if I can show you that without it being weird but let's try so you can see here's my butt and it comes here now this undershirt is only wrinkly because I'm short but you can see how much curve there is here and most people don't have that much curve going into their waist so what I had to do was shorten out my back yoke, okay? And the SOS pants does have a yoke. And some people would be tempted to shorten it only from the big side. And if you do that, you actually lose height in your yoke band and you distort the curve. So yoke is put there to pretend to be darts. Normally you would put darts on your pants and they shape to get to your waist. So the yoke is doing that, and you don't wanna take all of that out of either side. There are two ways to do this. You can do it the cheater way, or you can do it the correct way. So the cheater way would be to take a little bit off of this side and a little bit off of this side. I actually have to take almost a full inch to make that difference. So I would take a half inch here, a half inch here. That is not the proper way to do this, but it works as long as you're working in a knit fabric. So what is the right way to do this if you're working with a pair of jeans? You're actually going to cut, and I'll go ahead and snip this. You're gonna to cut to the seam allowance. You're gonna cut back, and you're gonna to wanna to make at least two different spots. You never wanna take the dart out of just one section, and you'll actually fold this. And you'll end up with an even more curved yoke piece would probably be more like that ish and then you would redraw this shape so it's nice and rounded so there's two ways to do that um, there's the cheater way which is fast and then there's the correct way the correct way is going to be more important if you're working with a woven fabric even if it's a stretch woven than if you're working with a knit a knit is going to be a little bit more adjustable so let me make sure oh facebook wasn't showing me my messages again um, Melissa's mentioning that she doesn't have anything sporty about her. And Melissa, let's be honest, I've put on quite a bit of weight since having a baby. And I am, and I've never been sporty in the sense that like super athletic or anything. I don't work out. I don't run. Like if I'm running, we're all in danger, right? So, but my body's natural build gives me large quads and large calves. So no matter my weight, I always have those specific fit adjustments that I have to make. 
So part of it is looking at your body and figuring out what, what works best. I mean, even at my thinnest, I've never had thigh gap. So I've always had that larger muscle that I had to account for. And up until now, I wasn't doing it the right way. I always could not understand how adding to the crotch curve was going to do anything until I drafted a pair of leggings. And I realized this section has to go around your leg. And if it cannot go around your leg, you're going to get crazy tightness in that front thigh. So if you have sporty thighs or a large quadricep, you need to add that little bit on the front crotch curve to make that space around. All right, um, I have definitely hit my 15 minutes. So I wanna go ahead and talk about shop news. And I promise we will come back and explore pants fitting again and again and again i mean honestly we could probably do a whole year of pants fitting and still just keep rediscovering new things and and part of it is i understand the fit adjustments for my specific body but that doesn't mean it has anything to do with your body so if you don't have sporty quads what i just told you about extending that crotch curve means a whole lot of nothing right but if you do then hopefully that's helpful so maybe maybe um, one of my ambassadors would like to hop on one day and talk about the pants adjustments that they make specific to them. And I think that would be really helpful for a lot of people since everybody's body is completely unique. So shop news. Oh, I have finished all of the Black Friday um, orders except for those that are on back order. And that includes black cotton lycra and black French terry. Um, I don't think we have holds on navy French terry or navy cotton lycra, but we don't have very much of it left. So I've got those coming into the shop. I've got, I think, six new um, double brush polys that are coming in, and I'm really excited about them. And I actually did something different, so you guys will be really proud of me. I did not just order all black, which is like my favorite color and I wear all the time. I actually have a mustard floral print that's coming that's really beautiful. Um, there's a polka dot print. There is a burgundy, which is just gorgeous. I, I fought the urge to buy the black or the navy. I just got the burgundy. I do have one black fabric, a black floral, and two navy florals coming. So they are really pretty. I'm really excited to, about them, and I'm going to get those listed as soon as I can. Probably not today. I've You know, there's only so many hours in the day, and I have to sleep eventually. But um, I do have those coming in. Um, I have not been able to find any more of those textured nylon lycras. I mean, those were super amazing. And I hope everybody got to see Natasha's dress because it was absolutely gorgeous and I was so jealous. Um, I don't have any place fancy to go this year, so I won't be making a fancy dress. And what else? Um, Oh, um, the black cotton lycra is here in the shop, so we're going to start cutting those orders. It's going to be a couple days before we get everybody who's back ordered caught back up, but that did arrive today. The other colors should be in either later this week, early next week, something like that. I mean, there's only so much I can do. But the last little bit, we are going to be having a contest of sorts in the group, and one of the prizes is a really super discounted coupon. So I'm still putting together the graphics for that. I'm hoping to have everybody everything up on Wednesday or Thursday this week so that you know what you have to do to enter. Um, but it's gonna be really fun and there'll be lots of prizes and, 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 um, not this Monday, but the following Monday, we're going to start Mystery Box Monday again. And we are going to do some super awesome deals on a mystery box of just rayon spandex. I haven't set pricing yet, but I know it's going to be amazing. And I think that is it. So let me make sure there's oh, no, lots of comments. So Margie says that she's scared of pants. And Margie, pants are scary. It's not the sewing of pants. I mean, anybody can sew a pair of pants. So don't let that part be the scary part. The scary part is figuring out how to fit 
your body. And there's so much, there's so many different body parts and so many things going on. I mean, you're trying to get something flat to go around a curvy piece. And it would be one thing if it was just a cylinder. I mean, anybody could wrap fabric around a cylinder, but it's a cylinder that keeps changing shapes and sizes. And then you have butts and crotch curves and there's so much stuff going on. So I understand that you're scared, but here's some things. Number one, knit pants make it a little bit less scary because the fabric itself will make some of the adjustments without you having to do anything. So always start there because you don't have to get it exactly right. You just have to get it kind of close. Um, the more detail that's in the sizing chart for a pants pattern, the easier it's going to be to get your fit right on the first try. So you definitely want things like waist and hip that includes your full circumference around your largest hip area, but having thigh um, and calf measurements will help make sure that if you're wearing a slim fitting pants, those things fit. And drafting this out, I mean, I put this together in like five minutes for Barbie. So, and I didn't worry too much about the crotch curves because this part isn't as important when you're fitting, okay? But um, having this information will make the leg fitting part that much easier. Um, Sharon said, I have, I had to deepen the crotch curve and grade my calves for the SOS pants. And that was exactly the same thing I had to do, Sharon. I will say that our legs are very similar, although you run and I'm a couch potato. So it is what it is. Um, let's see. Everybody's talking about how excited they are about the new fabrics and the contests. Um, Caroline said, I think figuring out how to fit your body is the trickiest part of sewing in general. And I would have to agree with you, Caroline. I mean, once you know how to sew, it's just getting your seam allowances right. So the actual creating a garment is really easy. The difference comes when, you know, the reason we sew is so that we get a great fit for our bodies or just because you want special fabrics that you can't grab at the store. But if I'm gonna take the time to make something, I want it to fit me as best as I can. And the truth is that every year I get a little bit better at fitting. I understand the way my body works a little bit better. I learn something new and I can apply that. And then I look back at the old garments that I made and I'm like, oh, I can't wear that. It has blah, blah, blah fit issue. But the truth is, I was really happy to wear those when I first made them. So don't be too hard on yourself. Fitting is a whole process, and there's thousands of books on how to fit. And really, you just have to get close. I mean, unless someone's going to be looking at the inside of your garments or sitting there with a the measuring tape and, like, checking for fit wrinkles and saying, oh, stand still, I want to check and see if you have this wrinkle here, nobody cares, okay? Okay. Be happy, be excited about what you create. Yes, learn new things, but don't take it so far that it makes you freaked out because that that's not fair. I mean, I can go to the store and wear crappy fitting clothes. So if your clothes don't fit perfectly, then your clothes probably fit just like everybody else's clothes that go to the store. <clears throat> Melissa says, I think a series of ambassadors talking about their pant adjustments could really be helpful. And I absolutely absolutely agree Melissa it's you know like I said not everybody's body is the same but if we can start saying oh well so-and-so's body is similar to mine and she made these adjustments or so-and-so has this problem and I also have that problem so this is how I adjust for it and that would maybe make it a little less scary for my ambassadors to do a live for me wink 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 <laughs> um okay let's see so Caroline says, what an interesting idea. I have a few standard adjustments, top and bottom. And that's absolutely true, Caroline. I'm sure that the longer each person sews, the more they figure out what they need. All right, so I want to thank everybody for joining me. It has been fun, as always. Um, if you don't know how I drafted out this little leggings pattern, it's actually very, very simple. Um, you can Pinterest, Google, Pinterest search it, or if you go back to Judy's um, live video that she did, 
last month. I think it was like November, early November. Um, and there's links in there for two different tutorials on how to draft this. Like I said, the crotch curve part, I find is going to be a little bit more finicky than the way they make it seem. They made it seem very simple and no big deal. And the reality is that my first pair was, I mean, the legs looked great, but the crotch curve was not pretty. So they definitely were not wearable. So certainly, you know, do this. This is, it doesn't take that long and you'll be able to match it to pants patterns and know, is this going to fit me well or is this just a waste of my time? Because if you can do that, like that's half the fitting part is knowing what your body looks like. So I want to thank everybody for joining me. It was super fun. I'm going to get those details for the contest as well as the mystery boxes put together. And I shall see you next week.